Hey friends, Chris Vandeviver here with Logic Pro Expert, and today I'm gonna to talk about exporting audio files for either archiving or for sharing with someone who doesn't use Logic themselves. So it's always a good practice to archive your sessions, to export stems or audio files either pre-processing or after the final processing, and probably even both. Just on the off chance that your session perhaps maybe someday is inaccessible down the road, whether it's been corrupted or an update screwed something up or there's just there's a variety of possibilities. Or perhaps you're in the boat that you are sharing audio files or stems with someone who doesn't use logic. Or perhaps you are that someone that uses Pro Tools Studio One or something else and you're trying to get a client to send you these files and it's just not working out. Not in a way that helps you. So I want to help out with that. We can go up to file and there's a variety of export options. I'm going to use key command command E to export. Now I have a drummer track here that I'm going to want to export. And rule number one when it comes to exporting, especially if you're sending these files to someone else, is you wanna make sure that every single file or stem starts from the same exact spot, which is typically bar one. Now this is important because, you know, you don't want that person or yourself if you switch DAWs to have to spend time trying to figure out where different instruments and parts were supposed to land on the timeline. It just, it would be damn near impossible. Instead, you want everything to start from bar one. So then you, that person or yourself can just drag everything in. It all lands on the same spot. You don't have to waste any time trying to wonder where things were supposed to go. Now you have two options to do this. You can either set the range to either extend file length to project end. So it'll start from bar one and go all the way to the end, which is noted with this triangle here at bar 18. So even though 9 to 18 has nothing occurring in terms of audio, it'll still export an audio file that full duration. Or you can set it to trim silence at file end. So 9 to 18 won't be included unless there's like a reverb tail or something. And that way you're saving a little bit of space. So I'm going to trim silence at file end. I'm going to export as wave 24 bit. I'm going to add the resulting file to the project browser here. So we can quickly drag things in and see what's going on. So let's export this drummer track. So we have an audio file now that we're going to drag in. And as you can see, we have a stereo track now of this particular percussion kit. So let's hear before and after. So clearly the kit has been exported, but the reverb that is very obvious on the original was not exported. So there's two options to export that reverb. You can either print it to the drum kit itself, which will take a little bit of routing, or you can export the reverb by itself, which can be really helpful. Let's go into the mixer. I'm going to select my small plate here. I'm going to use control T to introduce this reverb into the arrange page. So it has its own track lane. So you can hear the reverb. Let's try exporting it with that command E option. So it looks like Logic attempted to do something, but no audio file resulted from it trying to do something, which is a problem. So in this particular case, I want to export this reverb on its own. To do that, I'm going to use key command T. I'm going to set my command click tool to the pencil tool. So when I hold command, it turns into a pencil. And I'm going to click on this track lane for the reverb and I'm going to introduce an empty audio region. So it's empty. There's nothing going on. But now let's go to file. Instead of the general export command E, let's go to selection as audio file. And you can see that it's been selected here in the arrange page. So let's export. And look at that. Let's bring in this audio file. And you can see that there is now audio connected to it. And there's our reverb. So this empty audio region tells Logic that something is supposed to be occurring here. It's a placeholder, so make sure to export, but you have to export the selection, not just generally export the track. So if you wanted to include this reverb in the track itself, you wanted it printed with all the effects, let's create a track stack and we're gonna create a summing stack. Now select that summing stack, we'll call it drum. And let's export that. So let's bring this audio file back in. 
and take a listen. It's our drum track with the reverb, which is fantastic. So this, that's a really awesome option is to use track stacks and then export the, you know, the top level bus, the, the top level of the stack here. You can export drums, guitars, bass, vocals as a stem all together. So now there's a belief that Logic doesn't export mono, that it only exports in stereo, and that's not true. You just have to make sure to set your track to be a mono track. To do that, you can go over to the inspector here, and the channel mode, which is represented right now by two circles as like a Venn diagram, which means stereo, you can set it to mono by clicking on it. Now the single circle means mono, and the meter here is changed to a mono meter. So let's export that introduce this audio file and you can see here that there's one waveform as opposed to two which means it's a mono audio file which is super helpful and instruments can also be exported in mono if it has the option so the exs24 has a variety of options mono stereo multi-output let's set it to mono and you just have to make sure to set the plugins also to mono by clicking and holding on the right-hand corner there. Mono, mono. Okay, let's export this Latin kit now. Let's introduce the Latin kit. And it's a mono Latin kit. Check it out. So there are also instruments that don't offer the option to be in mono. The retro synth, for example, only offers stereo. Let's create the retro synth. I'm gonna introduce a region on here. I'm gonna just plug in a couple notes. All right, so what I would do in this particular case is I would bounce in place for the retro synth. So let's call it retro. And it's gonna create an audio region, stereo, obviously, and I would set it to mono and you're good to go to export it. So then finally, if none of these options are working for you for whatever reason, you can also export as an AAF file, which would be particular to sending your project to someone else that uses Pro Tools Studio One because those DAWs can open AAF. So what's really cool about AAF is that it will remember the audio files and where they were placed on the timeline. It doesn't export MIDI, unfortunately, so I would make sure to bounce down any MIDI tracks so that they are audio files. But check it out. File, export as AAF. I'm gonna make sure to export to my desktop and I'm just gonna call it export. And I'm gonna set my bit depth to 24 bit, wave, no dither, and whatever the sample rate was for the project. Let's save it. So it's telling me that it's only gonna produce the left channel for some of these tracks because I switched them from stereo to mono. That's cool. Now I have an instance of studio one here. I'm going to open my finder and I'm going to bring in my export AAF. I'm going to drag it into studio one and looky there. We have all the audio regions where they were placed in the session. As you can see, it didn't import any of the MIDI tracks, just the audio files. So you have a variety of ways to export audio files out of Logic. And you're not limited to stereo tracks and you know it's, it's not as difficult as it may seem. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thanks so much.